I'm selling coral at my very first frag swap. So in this video, we're going to prep for that frag swap with a little fragging session. What's up coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. I sincerely want to thank you for all the support for the channel. I am beyond grateful. And if you haven't yet, Go ahead, like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new content. And because I'm gonna upload the frag prep as a series, you're gonna wanna make sure you have those notifications on. Okay, well, let's get right into it. I'm nervous. I am unbelievably nervous. For the brief period of time that I thought I was going to be selling in the last frag swap, which was back in September, I had about a week to prepare. I was freaking out and I wasn't even going to be in my own tank. I had asked Seth from the Reef Shine guys if I could have like a little 10 inch by 10 inch square in his tank and he said no problem. It didn't end up working out but I was so nervous then and now I've purchased my own table at the Slash Frag Swap coming up on March 7th. I love our club name too, Slash St. Louis area saltwater hobbyists slash has a couple of frag swaps annually and like i said i tried to get into somebody's tank last time and then i tried to hit up people and you know nobody has room for extra frags from other people in their tank and i totally understand that so instead of me asking around this year i buckled down i put up the money for it and i have my own vendor table i'm excited i'm nervous i'm anxious all the things all the things the goal of this series is to kind of take you through the ups and downs of preparing for a frag swap. Now, I don't foresee myself ever becoming an actual vendor. I just have a lot of stuff right now and I'd like to offload a lot of that. And depending on how much I make, that may fuel the next project. I would like to get a nice display tank. I also want to be totally transparent about how many hours I've put into it and exactly how much money I've spent to prepare and then how much money I profited, hopefully, on top of all that. So I'll take you through all of those numbers in the last video after the frag swap is complete. So we're talking the cost of equipment, the cost of frag plugs, the cost of gas to get there, all of that stuff will be broken down. And if you're in the St. Louis area or you're close or you'd like to make a little bit of a drive out of it, our Slash Club frag swap is on March 7th. I've got all the information in the description below. And we usually have some national vendors that come through. Jason Fox is a regular at our frag swap, so it's nice to see him. But we have a good turnout every year and it's a lot of fun. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this prep. I don't think I've ever fragged zoanthids on camera, so we're gonna do that today. That's pretty much all I've picked out, just a bunch of zoanthids that we can frag and re-glue to some frag plugs that I've already prepared. We're about 30 days out, so over the next couple days, I'm gonna be doing a lot of fragging it's a great amount of time to let that frag heal and go ahead and encrust on the plug if it's an Acropora, uh, let it heal up if it's a Zoanthid or any kind of LPS. So we're going to go ahead and just do some Zoanthids today and get those started. You ready? Let's frag. So I'll just kind of take you through the equipment that I usually have on hand for any kind of fragging, especially Zoanthids. Uh, so I've got all my plugs here laid out ready to go. What I'll first do is I'll go ahead and dab a little bit of glue on all of these. I think I'll be able to fill it up with the frags that I have here, uh, but we'll see. If not, that's all right. We can just scrape off the glue whenever we're done. I've got my razor blade. I've got my tweezers just in case I need them. Uh, my bone cutters, which are essential. And of course, safety first, gloves and glasses. Let's start with the easy ones first. How about, uh, let's go with this one. It's done. It was that easy. I want to thank Polyp Lab for sending me some of their glue. This came in just like a care package that they send people who make content. So if you ever start making YouTube content, reach out to Polyp Lab. They've got great stuff. I'm not going to put too much glue on here. So always don't need a lot. And honestly, if you get too much glue on these, sometimes the glue as it dries can wrap around the Zoa and kind of suffocate it a little bit. So we just want to make sure there's just a little bit of glue since we're just dealing with Zoas today. You may remember the Zoa rock that had all the Aptasia on it that I went ahead and took into my care. Well, the peppermint shrimp that I have in my sump went ahead and took care of all of the Aptasia. There has been no Aptasia on that rock whatsoever. 
and I just clipped off a piece of the utter chaos because I want to make sure that there's a lot of variety when it comes to color of zoanthids. I'm not going to have a whole lot of run of the mill zoanthids in this frag swap because you know, you want to catch people's attention as they're walking by. You want to make sure that you have something they may not have in their tank. And while utter chaos is, you know, kind of a common zoanthid, it's, you know, one of those ones that's still, I don't know, it's still one of my favorites, so I like it. So I went ahead and I just I just took the bone cutters to that rock while it was in the sump and I just clip that off. So we'll go ahead and glue that to a plug. And then I also wanted to point out just briefly, I do use a little bit of Lugol's iodine whenever I'm making new frags. Now this one is going to be a little bit trickier, but not too bad. As you can see, there's two polyps that have kind of separated themselves here. And then there's a little baby on the side. So we're going to go ahead and try and make sure that this one stays with the baby and then we can remove this one. And these are money shot zoanthids, by the way. Really, really cool polyp. All right, well, I think we got it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up a little bit. I usually have frag plug debris all over my basement after I'm done fragging. Put that there. So it should be good. All right, these are pirate's blood, and a lot of people say these are blood shots, like uh, Jason Fox blood shots, but they are not. They are close, but they are definitely not as intense in color as the Jason Fox blood shots. So I think the plan with this one is to, it doesn't look like any of them are actually on the plug, so I wonder if we can just pop this off. Yep, that was easy. And then we just, we can just cut this right in half. So there'll be one with four polyps and one with two polyps. Hopefully. These are like some really cool orange and green. And I think we'll just do the same thing. We'll take the stem off and then we'll just slice it right down the middle. Trim it up. So unfortunately, these aren't as pretty as I would like, but it's so hard to get those smaller zoanthids, you know, up off of the plug. So it's gonna be kind of a chunkier frag, but once they grow in on the rock, you shouldn't notice. These are some of my favorites. These are Yodas, and they've just been going crazy on this plug. So there's like two polyps over here. There's a lone polyp here. So we'll probably be able to get four or five different frags out of this one. So let's just start chopping this guy up. Little baby polyp right here, it's so cute. These are Jason Fox stargazers. I've had these forever. Let's go ahead and uh, make these last frags of the Jason Fox stargazers. All right, now we can work with this. We've got probably two or three frags here. And again, stargazers aren't really that rare at all. But again, they, they pop. They, you know, they'll catch your eye for sure. And once you get these guys in a colony, they look awesome. So good. Two polyp frag here. All right. So if you didn't know what fragging was all about before, you do now. We just took, I think, uh, six original plugs here. I'm just gonna keep this one as a, a little mini colony. Sorry, Telegram, 
I said mini, mini colony again. Um, so we did, we had six plugs, right? And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and including those two, 16, 17. I mean, I would say that's a pretty good start. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, as they say. All right. Well, this will not be the end of the fragging session. Well, it will be for tonight at least, but I have some SPS frags that I'd like to go ahead and frag, like Monty's, and I've got a Satosa that I'd like to frag up, and a couple other things in there. I guess I can take these off now. But yeah, I'll probably have two or three more sessions before I am fully ready to go as far as what I'm gonna take to the frag swap this year. And we're coming up on frag swap and show season, so fasten your seatbelts, here it comes. What I hope to say at the end of this series is you can trust yourself, you got this, and you can participate in a frag swap too, especially if you've got a whole lot of extra frags that you wanna get rid of. Honestly, you did a great job at growing the coral, so you might as well frag it up, sell it, and use the money to maintain your hobby. That's what I've done this entire time now. And now that I've got a pretty decent sized collection, it should be able to sustain itself for some time. But now, I'm kind of looking towards that display tank. I think it'd be really cool to get a nice 100, 150 gallon tank down here, maybe put it in place of the frag tank, and then we can have a nice display as well. But that takes money, and so that's why we're working hard. I have already put my feelers out for other hobbyists who have done frag swaps in the past, and I'm making sure that I'm doing the proper amount of research before I just go throwing myself and all of my coral into a frag swap. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure to check out the Reef News Network podcast. They actually did a two-part frag swap series going from thinking you want to do it all the way to tear down. We're talking payment methods. We're talking equipment. We're talking fragging, all of that stuff, all of the things that you need to consider when you get into uh, a frag swap are in those two episodes. And I love the guys, Peter and Jeremy. They're awesome. They probably are super annoyed by me because I bug them all the time but it's one of the best podcasts out there in my opinion, and by far the best reef podcast in the business. So on to the checklist of the things that I have to do to prep for the frag swap. And if you're a vendor or you've participated in a frag swap before, I would love, what is that one hack? What is that one thing that you did that really made a difference? Go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I think at this point in the video is where I would say, go to osachoice.com, if you need that coral, get on it. Get on that coral, girl. They got the good stuff. Oh, and if you don't believe me, just go ahead and check out my OSA unboxing video, which you can find up here. I got some pretty sweet stuff. I mean, a lot of it's in the lagoon. I love the stuff that Allie and Joe and Scott picked out for me. Those guys, they were so thoughtful. All right, I think it's about that time where I put these back into the tank. And while I'm doing that, you guys can go ahead and uh, watch these videos. No, no, don't let me stop you. Just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just, I'm just standing here because the end card is usually only like 20 seconds, so. I'm just moving these and picking them up and setting them down again. 